Tabletop role-playing games are, of course, a simulation of life, and many of the storylines revolve around that. But there's always one that's a little bit tough to play, and that's adding romance into your world. These days, most tabletop role-playing games are either played with close friends in person at a table or online with strangers that you may have never met, both of which can have its problems. And one of those problems is what do you do about romance? Everyone knows the bard is going to seduce anything with legs or maybe even if it doesn't have legs. But most people aren't there to pretend to be someone else who goes to try to seduce whoever your friend's trying to pretend to be. And let's be perfectly honest, there's always that one guy who just makes things uncomfortable. In times like these, it's helpful to really go back and think about how exactly have people done romance throughout the ages. Dating as we think of now really wasn't available for most of human history. Modern dating is really only about 100 years old. In the past, men are usually the ones who leave the home and they go out to seek their fortunes, militarily going into new areas of immigration, exploration, colonization, whatever you like to call it. Men go out, they find new women to start a family with, whereas most women have stayed close to home unless they were married off. It was only in the early 1900s in certain countries that women were now allowed to leave the home and allowed to have jobs which paid them enough to cover their bills and their lifestyles. So how does this help us in our role-playing games? Well, very simply, we're going to turn the dial back a few hundred years to what courtship and relationships were originally thought of. For purposes of this video, we are going to exclude those in the profession of the night or the water profession or, well, naughty things. Traditionally, men had to do things in order to win the approval to marry a woman. And that's how we're going to talk about it for this video. But there's no reason you couldn't flip that script and have a woman try to gain a man's hand in marriage. Johnny, the adventuring half-orc, spies a beautiful elf maiden. He wants to pursue her romantically. Well, her fathers and her seven brothers are not going to take too kindly to that. Johnny is going to have to go through a betrothal process. He's going to have to accomplish a certain amount of tasks and to gain reputation. No father wants their daughter to date a schlub, someone who can't hold a job and is a loser in every way. So this is a chance for the DM to set conditions in order for the player to continue to romance the NPC. Hercules had a bunch of tasks. Most of the heroes in history had tasks. Maybe dad wants a dragon scale rug. Or perhaps he wants a cute little owl bear cub to give his daughters a wedding gift. And well, your players have to get that. Even in the Bible, Jacob had to work for Laban for seven years in order to get his wife, Rachel, only to find out on his wedding day, oops, father-in-law lied and married him off to the wrong woman. So he had to work seven more years to get the woman that he loved. So make it extra tough on your players. It's the least you can do for them making you role play romance. In most societies around the world, marriage was seen as more of a contract a legal contract combining two families instead of what we consider romance these days. Most people know this from Kingdom A having a prince while Kingdom B has a princess. Their parents, probably when they're young children, decide, hey, our kids are going to get married in order to form alliances. And by this way, if country A gets attacked, country B is obligated to help. If country B gets attacked, country A is obligated to help. This, of course, didn't always work out that way. Genghis Khan was famous for marrying off his daughters to foreign kings. When Genghis went to war, he would say, hey, you got to pony up and get in my army. He would then put them in the front so they would get killed. Now his daughters are in control of their former, king their former husband's kingdoms. That's another neat trick for you DMs. While we tend to think of this as aristocratic betrothal. This was also very common in lower classes as well, where people couldn't go from a lower class to a higher class. For example, it was very difficult for a peasant or serf class to marry into some sort of landed gentry. People who had a lot of money didn't want people of low status, especially the men, then claiming their family's hard-earned wealth. If this were to work, generally it would be a wealthier man and a poorer woman, because why would any woman of noble status go for a common man? 
Well, there could be a few reasons. Maybe he's noble. Maybe he's righteous in the view of their God. Maybe he's a hero from a war who never really got any money out of fighting. So in other words, this could be something where your characters, in order to marry into a higher class, a duke's daughter, a duchess in training, whatever they're called, if a character wants to marry that, perhaps first your characters need to perform some deed that gets them titles and gets them land and a certain amount of cash. This could be a bit different from the earlier mention of heroic deeds. This can be certainly more simple. Perhaps in some societies, education is the big thing, or having access to food. Certainly your characters could come up with that. And perhaps they can invent some sort of Aladdin-like backstory where it's totally false. This leaves a lot of opportunity for roleplay and shenanigans. Okay, okay, let's say you're not really interested in the historical precedents and you're just doing this for funsies. Well, there's still a lot of way to build up the drama in modern day romances. Go full Springer. That's right. If your players fall in love with an NPC, give him baby mama drama. That character could perhaps already have children and maybe her ex is in a gang of thieves or assassins. Maybe she has an illicit past where she was a lady of the evening. Or maybe she's actually on the run. Maybe she was in the Assassin's Guild. There's all sorts of things that could derail this. Does she worship a god that's diametrically opposed to your character's god? That'll create a lot of conflict. He could have spent a lot of time trying to convert her to his beliefs. Or maybe he decides he's got to kill her. From a practical standpoint, role-playing romance can be as fun as you want it to be. If it's something that you're uncomfortable with, especially if you have a lot of friends who you just don't want to get that personal with, that's fine. If a situation seems like it's going to be intimate, fade to black, cut to what other party members are doing. And would it be a shame if while your thief or bard or whoever was doing the deed in the back room, your other players got in a fight and they were left shorthanded? I bet they'd have something to say about his dalliances after that. And when we get back to it and join our missing party member, make sure you roll con checks for STDs and roll another check to see if one of the members, assuming it's appropriate, got pregnant. One never knows. Perhaps there's an illithid tadpole involved in the situation. Hey, it's a fantasy game. Don't let the players be the only ones to have fun. So romance can be a lot of fun in D&D, and it only has to be as weird as you allow it to be. Don't let your players run roughshod over you and have a lot of fun. There's a lot of great historical context, cultural mishaps, and all sorts of adventure and roleplay opportunities that can be involved in romance. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the like button down below, and subscribe to the channel. I've got more videos like this coming up. And happy Valentine's Day to all who will partake.